Hey, people, I'm going to play y'all a couple of clips and show you a little more information you probably haven't seen on this George Floyd that's making the police look a little dirtier than they already were. A stunning new revelation from the former owner of a Saint Min South Minneapolis rather club. She's telling five investigates that George Floyd and former officer Derek Chauvin both worked security for her at El Nuevo Rodeo out on Lake Street. Investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen just spoke with that woman. He's here now with more on what she said. Eric? Jackie, to be clear, while Maya Santa Maria says the two men worked for her as recently as last year, she says she does not know if Derek Chauvin and George Floyd ever actually spoke to each other. The first time she saw this video, Maya Santa Maria says it took her a moment to make the connection. Because my friend sent and said, This is your guy, the guy who used to work for you. And I kept saying, It's not him. And then they did the close up. And that's when I said, Oh my God, that's him. She says now former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin worked security for her at El Nuevo Rodeo for 17 years before she sold the club just months ago. He sometimes, he sometimes had a real short fuse and he seemed just uh, afraid when there was an altercation. He. <clears throat> Always resorted to pulling out his mace and, and pepper spraying everybody right away, even when I felt it was unwarranted. Even more surreal, Santa Maria says, is that George Floyd, the man pinned under Chauvin's knee on Monday night, worked for her too. I didn't recognize George as one of our security guys, guards because he looked really different lying there like that. And it wasn't until I saw the pictures of him come up, then it snapped, and, and one of my employees said, look, Maya, he, he worked for us. Both men who worked security for the same club before their final encounter that left one dead and the other at the center of national outrage. But Santa Maria says she does not know if they ever really knew each other. Um, they were working together at the same time. It's just that Chauvin worked outside and the security guards were inside. I thought to myself, what if he could just could have just said, hey, man, you and I work together at Maya's place, man. Like, remember me? Santa Maria says George Floyd had been working security at her club for about a year on some of their busiest nights. She said he might have been among 20 or 30 people she would bring in for security in addition to off duty police such as Chauvin. We've reached out to Chauvin's attorney and the Minneapolis Police Department about this development, but at this point we're still waiting to hear back from both of them. So if their job security, if he lasted for a year, I mean, he's, he was doing his job. And that's what your job is to watch people. You're watching everybody. And I'm sure that they they knew each other. I'm sure they saw each other many times. So you surely heard about the riots and the fires and and uh and the and the loot and they broke into uh auto zone and uh and looted and burned it down. And somebody had caught a picture of this guy that was breaking into the auto zone. And they got a video of them doing it. You right see the police on the police station up here watching. So this guy's just making sure the windows are all open for everybody. I do good. I'll do, I'll do my little bit. Those cops will come for you if you're doing that crap. No, that's dumb. That's garbage. Oh, that's shit. So the protesters aren't into it. They're not liking it either. So they get a good video of this guy. He's not liking the lady videoing him. And so he's heading back toward the police station now. So the people out there already figured out what was going on. It's a cop that was sent out there to to steer the the people away from protesting into looting.
He got a good picture of him. So this girl had posted this because she heard the story. And somebody had come back and they had spot him and they knew this cop. Name's Jacob Peterson with St. Paul the Police Department. So they had seen him uh, going back to the department. Somebody else had seen him and ratted him out. So she had posted this before and somebody come back and she had updated. This man has been identified as Jacob Peterson from St. Paul Police Department. Someone suggests in my news feed that agents were placed within the protest in Minneapolis to incite looting in an attempt to stifle the message of the protest. I didn't want to believe it on word alone, so I did some digging and found live evidence of this occurring. This man was caught on video by multiple people smashing the windows of the auto zone with a hammer. After being confronted, he rushes off and was spotted by several witnesses walking into the precinct. I don't have the video evidence of this part, but we'll post if I find it. Take note on how this man is dressed as well as the specific type of mask he's wearing. See how he pushes the women recording him when he realizes his face is on camera. Also ask yourself, why is he walking around with a hammer, smashing windows, holding an umbrella? but not looting himself. It's very possible that he is not the only one planted among the protesters to do this. Some say it was many as six, but I don't want to speculate on the number without the evidence. Could be more, could be less. Looting is never okay, even if incited by someone else, and it's okay to be upset about it. But I think we should be upset about this and the death of George Floyd even more. The first video was over 40 minutes long on Periscope, so I took a screen recording to save you guys time. The man filming the first video was running for Congress in the area and was doing his best to stay away from the looting and violence. So you, you have to do the math, you know, why is he busting the windows out and he's not looting? So this racial tension started a long time ago and the story's been twisted a good bit about what actually happened. And I really can't tell you exactly what happened because it would be found anti-Semitic to, to tell you. But this writer at My Jewish Learning talks about the Jews in the African slave trade and the role some Jews played in Atlantic slave trade, both as traders and as slave owners. He says the allegations in recent decades that Jews played, Jews played a disproportionate role in the enslavement of African Americans and, this, and that this fact has been covered up have made the topic of a controversial one. And those who make this case include Louis Farrakhan, leader of national the Nation of Islam and David Duke, the, the two opposite sides, both say this. He says that 75% of Jewish families in Charleston had slaves. And to the question of did Jews dominate the slave trade, he denies it. But if you look at all the old artwork, the sails are always have the red and white stripes on the boats that signifies Jew. So in the time before the Revolutionary War, America was known as a constitutional republic. It wasn't a democracy. And uh, people were free. And so, and so the poor white folk, they, uh, you know, they fed themselves off the land and, uh, and they grew their corn and, and, and brewed their whiskey. And they really didn't want for much. The the rich white folk had slaves, and and uh, they would drive prices up uh, with their wealth. And in the north, um, they had all the factories up there, and so the hatred for the Negroes was more up north because. 
they could take their jobs in the factories. But uh, in the South, you know, the poor white folk really didn't want the jobs they had anyway. And so the North was watching the power grow in the South with their wealth from their exports. They had to do something about it. So they wanted to tax. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to tax the South more. And that's when the fascism started in America. The overwhelming majority of the rebel soldiers was poor white people. They weren't fighting to keep their slaves. They were fighting to keep their freedom from the new fascist form of government. They were fighting for their way of life. And you could see it here on, uh, on the statue of Lincoln. And he's sitting here holding these two fasts. And that's an ancient symbol for big, strong government. You can see it here in the Senate on both sides. So fascism is, is a political ideology and a mass movement that dominated many parts of Central, Southern, Eastern Europe between 1919 and 1945. It also had adherents in this Western Europe the United States, South Africa, Japan, Latin America, and the Middle East. But this, uh, this statue was built uh, right about the time of the Spanish flu, is when this was put in here. Uh, I think they worked on it from around 19, 1915 to 1922, just as the Spanish flu was ending up and they put their symbol. So the Spanish flu was probably created the same. It came out just after they were vaccinating everybody. Uh, I think smallpox vaccination was, uh, they first found one in, in 1905 and, and they started spreading. That's probably the cause of the Spanish flu, same as this coronavirus today. They're trying to take more control. So the the old urban legend says that the sculptor carved his hands into uh, into sign language, with the left hand forms an A, and the right hand betrays an L. And that's uh, and that's supposed to be his initials, Abraham Lincoln. But uh, that's law, L A low. That's that word in the Hebrew Bible in your Ten Commandments that means thou shall not. The law. And you can see it here. Law. L-A. Not you shall murder. Law. Not you sh to nap. And law. To nab. G-N-A-B. Nab. To steal. So policemen don't really have a product other than they protect a, a fascist government. And it's they need protection because the people aren't too thrilled about the regulations they put on them. The people want to be able to grow their own medicine and not have to pay $160,000 to spend a night at the, at the hospital. You know, they, they, uh, they want to be able to grow their own food and not told that they they can't farm their own property and uh, and so right now you know the the America's going to hell states are going bankrupt when they file bankruptcy those policemen lose their pension and so they're really stressing right now they uh, they have a lot on their mind and if somebody's if somebody's hollering them get off of him you're killing him, that's probably just going to make a cop want to sit on his neck a little longer. So I'm going to finish this off by saying that I don't believe in the Christian heaven. And it's stupid to teach people that, even if it was true. You know, nobody's dying and going to a better place. Teach everybody that they're going to reincarnate right back here. And take good care of this place and try to leave it better than you got here. So when you come back, coming back to a nicer place. 
All right. Good day.